So Mozilla have made the recent decision to include the Pocket add-on to their default browser bundle for the Firefox web browser. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the ramifications of all that, what it means and the community reaction, and why I personally believe that reaction is justified. So what is Pocket and what is the Pocket add-on? Well, Pocket is a link sharing service, not dissimilar to something like Pinterest, uh, where you effectively, well, share links. Um, and it's designed to replace the sort of the read it later function that was being worked on as part of the native Firefox client, but uh, they decided to effectively ditch that and run with Pocket instead. Now the add-on itself is released under the Mozilla public license, I'll forget the iteration exactly, but the platform that Pocket runs on, the software that runs the website and all that, is very much proprietary and closed sourced and kind of similar to just about any other social network and how it works. Like I say, it's kind of really quite similar to Pinterest, or at least that's the feel, that's the vibe that I got from it. So people are kind of uh, annoyed by this, um, and people have taken objection to this, on the basis that even though the Pocket add-on um, being open sourced, you know, in and of itself, it fits the literal definition or the literal philosophy that Mozilla kind of hold quite close to them. Um, it doesn't really follow the spirit of it because it's effectively promoting a proprietary service. And um, and I can't say that I really like this. Now, I know that Mozilla are looking for to increase the monetization of the Firefox web browser, and I would personally like to see this. I really don't like it when companies that I think have a really good core philosophy and, um, you know, sort of adhere to a strict, co you know, sort of, code of ethics, I guess, um, have trouble funding themselves. I, I always like to see companies that I support on a more um, sort of values-based level, you know, sort of struggle to make the money that they, they require to sort of maintain themselves, but also to expand. And I use the word company in inverted commas because uh, Mozilla often refers to itself as a, a, a not-for-profit. Now, Firefox have issued a rebuttal, and I call it a rebuttal, not a response, um, because it is a rebuttal. They say that the Pocket add-on uh, in previous iterations of Firefox was widely downloaded and very favorably looked upon, very, very popular, and so they wanted to include it for the benefit of everyone. Um, they also said that you can just simply remove the button. Um, and... Um, uh, and, uh, and that was really about it, I think. Um, they didn't sort of appear to have listened to any of the criticism. They just appear to have said, well, look, some of you wanted it, so you're all going to have it. And um, they do talk about Mozilla working with uh, Pocket to improve their privacy policy, but having read their privacy policy, it's the same privacy policy as you'd pretty much get on any other social network. They still reserve the right to keep your information. They still reserve the right to use your information for analytics and marketing and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I really don't see an improved privacy policy there, I'm afraid. Um, and using, um, you know, using a, uh, using your open source browser with a very sort of strong and um, admirable um, philosophy to push um, a proprietary service, which is what Pocket is, all the software that runs the Pocket website is proprietary, I see that as being pretty contrary to the at least the spirit of your philosophy, and that is somewhat concerning. Although the add-on itself that comes included in the browser bundle is released under the Mozilla public license, Again, the service itself is not. So, we have not been having much luck with our big browsers lately. And um, and i got to say, I hope Mozilla sort of take this on board. Because I do not consider the option of just simply removing it from the... Uh, from the from the from the interface of the browser to be really acceptable. It doesn't actually remove the um, the plugin itself. You actually have to go into the uh, under the hood settings menu to actually deactivate it properly. Just a quick note for those who question why people might be so annoyed by this particular decision is because, and, and when people get annoyed at things like questionable privacy policies of websites and services, is that um, a lot of times 
we, you know, willingly hand over information to a company. But one of the problems with that is that although that we might trust the company at the time of handing over our information, we might trust its competence, we might trust their, you know, sort of core ethics and philosophy and, 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 and whatnot. But we don't ever know what that company might turn into 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the line. It might be bought out by a company that we do not trust with our data. And they might become a company that um, is significantly less ethical than they were 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. So it always pays to be very cautious about what you do with your personal information because what applies today might not necessarily apply in the future. So again, it might sound like I'm wearing my tinfoil hat, but I gotta say, you know, it's worth thinking on the long term for this one. And it is worth, um, you know, being aware that uh, any given service could be bought out by Microsoft or Google or Facebook at, at any given moment. And, you know, these big mega corporations are gobbling up smaller companies really, really quickly. And um, and I think that it, it is worth now more than ever to scrutinize these companies um, for the for the sake of our own, you know, information safety. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think down in the description below. I have a pretty clear cut opinion on this one. I'd like to see them reverse it. And boy, have we had our, our fair share of troubles with the big browsers this uh, this year. That being said, though, I have actually had a look at the Midori browser. And although a lot of people seem to complain that it's not that stable, if you tweak a few of the um, settings, uh, I actually find it to be a reasonably usable and lightning fast browser. Admittedly, the lack of available plugins is something of an issue, but it is a browser that I recommend other people check out if they're looking for a not-so-well-known, lightweight, uh, alternative web browser. You might not necessarily want to use it as your main web browser, but for a lot of uses, it's actually pretty good. And interestingly enough, the default browser for, I think it's Elementary OS, which is a highly questionable choice, but a brave one and... Uh, uh, and, and you've got to admire, you've got to admire the courage on that one. I got to, I got to say. But anyway, yeah, it's worth checking out. Uh, open source, uh, GPL version three, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and it has a pretty nifty website which explains its core philosophy reasonably well. Um, so that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and of course, leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. That's about it for me today. Thanks very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.